Hi everyone, this is Ramalinka Prasad Kupa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is water for pharmaceutical usage. Water for pharmaceuticals is used in several stages of production. It includes in production of APIs, dosage forms, and for cleaning of equipment. It is used in testing laboratory also. This video focuses only on generic requirements. However, if the water is used for administration to patients in the formulated state or the use of small quantities of water in pharmacies to compound individually prescribed medicines, it is necessary to comply to the specific requirements. Let us see various components of water system. Let us see the requirements. Water is being used extensively in pharmaceutical manufacturing. The water quality should be monitored and controlled like for any other input materials. Due to its polarity and hydrogen bonding, it has unique characteristics to dissolve, absorb, adsorb, or suspend many different compounds. It includes potential contaminants also, which can pose health hazard to the consumer. Since it is used in the manufacture of pharmaceuticals, it should be treated like other input materials. As other input materials are controlled and tested for suitability, water must also be controlled and tested for suitability in the process. Unlike other input materials, water is taken as per process demand from a continuous flow and so specific batch number or lot number cannot be assigned. This is unique for input water. Unlike other inputs where there is specific batch number or lot number and the evaluation is done on the specific quantity to establish suitability. Water is generated and distributed in a continuous stream by a complex system. It may not be possible to assign a specific batch number and evaluate separately. So the assurance of water quality to meet the on-demand expectation is therefore essential. So this is the strategy for controlling of water quality. The focus is more on generation than testing. A comprehensive system, totally qualified and validated, monitored, reviewed at appropriate intervals should be a necessity. Water has unique chemical properties and is able to dissolve, absorb, adsorb or suspend many different compounds, contaminants that may cause hazards in themselves or may react with intended product substances resulting in hazards to health. In addition to other ionic impurities, metal contaminants, microbiological contaminants which is present in water as suspended contaminants can be health hazard for the consumer. So control of microbiological quality of water for pharmaceutical use to minimize microbial contamination by proper design of the system, periodic sanitization and by taking appropriate measures to prevent microbial proliferation is a high priority. The design of water system should be in such a way to ensure that the water generated, stored and distributed is not beyond the designed capacity and meets its specifications. The design should consider 
slope of the plumbing system to make sure that the water is not stagnated. The number of joints should be minimum. There is a potential for growth of microbes if a greater number of joints are present in the system. Roughness in the plumbing system will cause more proliferation of microbes. The surroundings of water system should be dry always. Wetness could cause proliferation of microbes. Sanitization is the method to control microbiological contamination. The capacity of the system should be designed to meet the average and peak flow demand of the current operation. The design should consider average flow and peak usage flow. When many production modules are in operation, the water requirements will be higher than the average flow. The water production process should be validated to ensure the water generated, stored and distributed always meets the designed capacity and its specifications. The equipment for water system should be qualified for its design. The design requirements should consider the quantity of water to be generated and distributed. Basically, based on this major aspect, the further design will have to be designed. The system should be qualified for proper installation and operation. When once the DQ, IQ and OQ are signed off for satisfactory compliance, the system will be taken for performance qualification. Detailed maintenance and sanitization procedures should be in place as an elaborate system. While qualification process is on, it is recommended to initiate detailed maintenance procedures and sanitization procedures. Thermal sanitization procedure include using hot water at about 65 to 80 degrees Celsius. Chemical sanitization typically using oxidizing agents such as ozone, hydrogen peroxide, per acetic acid, etc. are also available. In certain cases, UV sanitization can also be effectively done. Detailed calibration procedures and records of execution of calibrations should be in place. Detailed stepwise calibrations for flow meters, conductivity meters, pH meters, dosing meters, etc. should be in place. Appropriate recording formats also must be included. Maintaining the ion exchange beds as and when required should be clearly defined in the maintenance activities of such ion exchange water purification systems that are in operation. This is important. Maintenance procedures of such water treatment systems, the top up of beds is necessary. Over a period of time of operation, the beds will get depleted slowly. Hence, it is necessary to top up the beds. Generation quantity, usage quantity, wastage quantity of water should be reconciled. This is some sort of a balance sheet for water generation and usage. Let us look into the specifications among several types of water. The following are the most frequently used types of water. Drinking water or the potable water. 40 CFR part 141 has detailed requirements for drinking water. IS 10500 guideline also has adequate information. Purified water for USP purified water, TOC that is total organic carbon and conductivity tests may be adequate. 
water for injection. There are similar specifications for water for injection too. Other grades RO or demineralized water or soft water. There are specifications for turbidity, color, pH, TDS that is total dissolved solids, hardness, other halides, metallic impurities including other toxic metals like lead, arsenic, cadmium, etc. Soft water is another category of water which has very low hardness. It will be less than 61 ppm of calcium. Soft water is generally used as a feed water for boilers. This does not form many scales on the sides of the boiler. Additional specifications and testing should be considered if there is any change in the raw water source, treatment techniques or system configuration. Obviously, as any other change control in pharmaceutical manufacturing, it is necessary to evaluate the impact on the change of the input water. Let us see the requirements for water storage and distribution systems. The storage and distribution system should be fit and compatible with water generation system. Water stagnation causes microbial growth. Necessary slope should be maintained for plumbing system. There should not be any dead legs in the pipelines. If the length of the leg exceeds 1.5 times of the branch pipe diameter, it is considered as a dead leg. Dead legs are brewing centers for microbes. Sanitary design fittings are necessary. SS316L quality stainless steel is a good choice for such fittings. Threaded connections should be avoided to the extent possible. Other materials such as unplasticized polyvinyl chloride may be used for treatment equipment designed for less pure water such as ion exchangers and softeners. It should be designed to be fully integrated with the water purification components of the system. Generation and distribution systems are complementary and paid to each other. Both must work together compatible to each other. Materials of construction MOC of the system should be compatible with the water flowing inside. It should prevent any potential leaching of other impurities or elements and corrosion resistant. As explained, SS316L grade materials are well suited for water generation and distribution systems. Care should be taken for smooth finish and low friction joints, proper design of flanges, unions and valves in the storage and distribution system. The internal finish should have an average surface roughness of not greater than 0.8 micrometer Rea. When stainless steel is used, mechanical and Electro polishing techniques may be employed. Electro polishing improves the resistance of the stainless steel materials to surface corrosion. Let us see the sanitization aspects of water system. Water treatment equipment, storage and distribution systems should be provided with necessary arrangements to control the proliferation of microbiological organism during normal use as well as techniques for sanitizing the systems after intervention for a maintenance or modification. This is the purpose of sanitization to make the system free from microorganisms or bioburden. The techniques employed should be should consider 
the interdependency between the materials and the sanitization techniques. This point is important. The sanitization method should not disturb other setup of the system adversely. For example, for microbial control, chlorine is dosed into the input water for purification. Unless the chlorine is neutralized to less than 0.5 ppm, the RO membranes get damaged. Chlorine damage to the membrane can result in decreased salt rejection and poor quality permeate. This requires expensive membrane replacement and downtime. If there is excessive chlorine in the feed water, it is neutralized with a low concentration sodium sulphate solution or a carbon bed or a combination of two. Let us see the aspects of operation of water systems. Planned, well defined, successful and well documented commissioning and qualification is essential for successful operation and validation of water systems. This is the objective evidence for the qualification and validations done. The system should be qualified for its intent. This also is a part of objective evidence to establish the capacity of the water generation system. After successful validation, the water system should be validated in different phases. This is the part of performance qualification. Phase 1 may be conducted for 2 weeks, phase 2 may be conducted for another 2 weeks. During this phase, as per defined plan, chemical and microbial testing should be done. Continuously monitoring the incoming feed water daily to verify its quality, continuously monitoring after each step in the purification process at each point of use and other defined sample points, develop appropriate operating ranges, finalize operating, cleaning, sanitization and maintenance procedures. You must demonstrate production and delivery of the product water of the required quality and quantity. Use and refine the standard operating procedures for operation, maintenance, sanitization and troubleshooting. Verify provisional alert levels, develop and refine test failure procedures. All these prescriptions are given in WHO technical report series number 970 dated 2012. Usually water is not used for pharmaceutical manufacturing during this phase 1. In phase 2, same scheme is continued after successful completion of phase 1 validation. Use of water in pharmaceutical manufacturing may be accepted provided that the data demonstrate appropriate water quality and the practice is approved by QA. In this approach, consistent operation within established ranges should be demonstrated. Also, consistent production and delivery of water are the required quantity and quality when the system is operated in accordance with the SOPs should be demonstrated. Phase 3 typically runs for one year after the satisfactory completion of phase 2. Running for one year is to consider the impact of quality variations in the input quality of water in different seasons. This is to establish continued reliable performance over an extended period and to ensure that the seasonal variations are evaluated. The sample locations, sampling frequencies and tests 
may be reduced to the normal routine pattern based on the established procedures proven during phase 1 and phase 2. To avoid any surprise, an interim report for every quarter may be made and evaluated for any trends. This would help fine tuning certain parameters to make the system work within normal trend. Last but not the least, let us see the requirements for maintenance of water systems. After completion of phase 3 of the qualification program for the water system, a system review should be undertaken. This review process establishes the trends of performance of the system over each quarter and one year. The water system should be maintained in accordance with controlled documented maintenance program. Since this is a critical component of pharmaceutical manufacturing, the system should be well maintained throughout the year. The water system should be reviewed at appropriate regular intervals. Based on the review along with annual product quality reviews, necessary modifications may be made to keep the water generation and distribution system healthy. I hope that this brief explanation on requirements of a successful water generation and distribution system is understood well. Read WHO Technical Report Series number 970 dated 2012, WHO Working Document QAS Oblique 20.842, Revision 1 of July 2020, Environmental Protection Agency that is EPA guideline 40 CFR part 141 for drinking water for more information. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like and share. Also, please leave a message in the comments box for any further support. Thank you.